Hey everybody, welcome to my garage where I'm doing a little experiment with sand shrimp or ghost shrimp if you're down in California, it's the same thing. So, you know, of course sand shrimp is awesome bait and we'd all love to just be able to get sand shrimp whenever we want it. But the reality is it's not always available. If it's windy on the coast or, you know, storms or whatever, I've, I've heard of it all now, but getting deliveries of sand shrimp on a regular basis is difficult. And also, you know, when you, <laughs> I mean, I'd order a bunch of sand shrimp uh, one week and then the next week, for whatever reason, people aren't fishing or whatever, you know, and they close the sturgeon or they do something or another and to where I get stuck with a bunch of sand shrimp that just die and that's just throwing away money. And that, that's, that's not a good way to do things. You know, on the East Coast, they have tackle shops or well, bait shops more what are just rooms full of big giant tanks full of shrimp, different kind of shrimp, but you know, shrimp are, are similar. I have uh, in the house, I've got a tank full of, you know, like cherry shrimp, you know, like aquarium type shrimp, and they reproduce and breed and they're crazy. They, they, you know, they're really cool. And I think they're a lot more fragile than these things because these things got to be tough the way they get treated and they still last for four or five days in a little styrofoam container. So I'm hoping that I can develop a system here that will keep the sand shrimp alive and available on a continuous basis. So if, if you have any experience with this or advice on this, I'd love to hear it. You know, I'm, I'm just trying to figure this out. I've, I've got about 26 gallons of water in here on a pump and the filter that will cycle through and I think I can control the ammonia. Uh, I've got some sand in here, try to buffer the pH a little bit. But so far, so good. About two weeks, and these guys are doing good. And uh, I think out of the seven dozen I put in here, I've lost, I don't know, seven or eight now. Not, not all at the same time. Uh, just every once in a while, I lose one. Now, the crazy thing is, look at this. There's one here that looks like he's dead, right? This guy looks like he's dead. But if I get him going, see? He's actually alive. The craziest things, they, they play possum. I, I don't know, they just do that. They like to lay on their back sometimes and flip over and, and you think, oh, maybe they're dying, but that one's been doing that, that little one, for you know, a week and a half now. So, I these things are really cool. You know, the, the thing about it is on the coast, they're, they're considered a pest, right? The oyster farmers hate them. In fact, they used to poison them, spray them. And they had to stop doing that. But the, the problem is the, these guys are like earthworms where they dig up, they, they, you know, they dig the, the ground up, right? So they're down in like Willapa Bay and, and different flats like that. Lots of muddy sand. And they dig their little tunnels down in there and cause it to be very unstable. And the oysters grow on the surface and fall down into the mud. So the oyster farmers hate them. But the thing is the, the native oysters, the Olympia oysters, they were over harvested and wiped out a long, long time ago. So the ones that are being grown now commercially are, uh, I think they came from like Japan, that area. But they, they, they lay on the surface. But the, the native Olympia oysters would bury down into the mud and create a layer, a hard layer, that the sand shrimp couldn't penetrate. So they didn't really compete with each other that much. And also there's a theory about uh, less fresh water flushing down because of the dams and so forth. Because the fresh water, when that flushed through big rains and the floods, it would wipe out a lot of the, the sand shrimp and control the population. So there is apparently a population explosion out there on the coast, but we can't always get them in here to fish with. So this little experiment I got going, if I can keep them going a month this way, and everything's good then i'll start uh offering these in the in the store and hopefully have live healthy sand shrimp all the time and that would be really cool and you know they do eat i've got them eating some dried seaweed they eat fish food i got some other some shrimp pellets that i feed the, the shrimp i have inside and they seem to do well with it um, uh, it's just, it's a, they're, they're really pretty cool creatures they, they are survivors i see I see how they, they make it out there now, and uh, just so I know how tough they are, even though they look so fragile, especially when you, if you just know them as being in a cup, you know, and you use them for bait. But they, they're some neat little creatures, and really good bait. So let me know if you have any uh, advice on this. 
I'd sure like to hear it. Take her easy.